YouTube kick. Man, today we're going to hang out and go ahead and start with Stephen A. Smith, and then we'll get on to the rest of the show. So Stephen A. Smith talked about a little bit of black on black crime. I got some statistics here. Um, you can find these statistics at the Wallet Hub, um, as well as other websites if you want to, to find out this information on homicides and stuff like that. But you know, there was a shooting in Maryland at a block party and 28 people, I believe, were injured and two people died. Um, 20 of those people were under the age of 18. The arrests were over. And so it's a very interesting thing that we want to talk about when it comes to the black on black crime. Oh, hold on, before I continue, let me get that actual website for you guys. Uh, hold on. Because I don't want to steer you guys wrong. I just had it up and then I was looking at something completely different. Hold on a second. Okay, the website would be... Uh, police, police1.com slash crime prevention. You can also, um, but they got their information from the Wallet Hub on the top five cities uh, for homicide per capita. So you can either go to Wallet Hub or you can go to police1.com. Um, and that, uh, that, what that pretty much says is <clears throat> Memphis, Tennessee, New Orleans, Baltimore, St. Louis, and Detroit are the top cities for homicides per capita. And they all have something in common, right? And that one common thing is that the black population is high, except for St. Louis. But before I continue into that, I want you to hear what Stephen A. says. I, I encourage you to go watch the entire interview, please. Um, I watched the whole thing. He, the first half, he talks about the black on black crime. And the second half, he talks about the ESPN, which we will talk about here in a moment. So let's go ahead and check that out. Let's go ahead and get that up. Thank you, DJ. All right, let's listen in. eradication of guns I just want them policed better that's all but no matter which side you're on this is about the side of human life this is about black lives mattering where's the noise when are we gonna do something if a police officer went out there right now. I want to say this before we continue. That is a good point. Where is the noise? You know, I do think people do talk about this black on black crime. I just don't see it. The only people I ever hear it from are people that get, you know, uh, not necessarily myself. I'm not a huge figure, but, you know, your Stephen Age, your Candace Owens. Um, you know, one thing I never really noticed is from Shannon Sharp. I never heard Shannon really ever talk about this, um, but I wish he would kind of get up on this. But that's his prerogative. He doesn't have an obligation. Just because you're black doesn't mean you have to talk on this stuff. But I do want to say that there's not enough noise when it comes to the black on black crime. And I talked about this enough. It's, it's almost as if... Um, and I hate saying this, but it's almost as like black people, and this is not true, but I am saying it, it's almost like we're a second class citizen sometimes. You know, we're the third. We used to be the second biggest population. I believe now Latinos are above us. Uh, Latinos, the Mexicans are at 19% of the population and we're at 13%, right? And I'm surprised we even got up to 13. I'm surprised we're not declining further than that because we not only do we kill each other more, we also kill our babies more than any other thing. And I just, I just... It's just tough. It's just tough because it's like I understand you want to fight against racism. I understand you want to fight against white supremacy and all that kind of stuff. I understand that there is some talk. Yes, there can be some talk about racism. But to say that the main reason that black people are dying and the reason we our society hasn't gone forward is because of white people, I think that it's just a manipulation tactic to get us talking amongst each other. Right. And f speaking on that, um, I'll get to that later. Anyway, the point is. We got to start talking about it more, not out of hate or just saying that black people are animals and savages. We can start talking about it as if, you know what? Black people were better than this. We're not just some animalistic creature out here who are just ready to shoot each other at any chance, especially what happened in Baltimore when people got shot up at a block party. And you know what's so stupid about that? Is it's not even shocking. It's not even a shock. Really, is it a shock to you? Black people getting shot up at a block party. We saw that in movies growing up. If y'all know those kind of movies, boy, uh, what was that name of that movie? Uh, Boys in the Hood, right? Menace to Society. That was normal. And even when they made parody of those movies, it was always seen that way. Even in White Man Can't Jump, you remember when the black guy went up to the black guys, 
he went up to the black guy's shop and was going to pretend to rob him with a gun. And then he sells the gun to the black guy. It's just like crazy like that. Anyway, continue on. And killed somebody black. We'd be in an uproar. And rightfully so. If a white person or some wannabe cop who was white or Hispanic happened to shoot an unarmed black person, we'd be up in arms. And rightfully so. How is this proliferation and accumulation of flat out cold blooded murder not causing the same kind of uproar? It's a and we got to commend Stephen A on this. And I, I want to say this publicly while, and go ahead and put the camera on me, DJ. Um, I want to say this. I, I am a problem of this uh, issue. Stephen A does talk about black people a lot, and he may bring up race a lot. But one of the things that I've had to learn and that I've been bad about when it comes to Stephen A is because I'm so used to people who don't agree with Stephen A when he does talk about black people, I assume that, Stephen A is always trying to race bait. And the more, now that he's got this podcast and I can listen to him more easily, more easily, I can listen to him easier. I now understand that I don't think that he's always trying to race bait. What I'm starting to understand about Stephen A is he does go after the hard issues. It's not like he picks one side or the other. He just believes what he believes. And sometimes we agree or we don't disagree, but I do think that he really does care about the black population. And he just happens to talk about him the most because he truly believes because he's black and he has a platform that he decides to really go after. it. I thought when I heard about him talking about the shooting in Baltimore, I really thought he was going to go towards the white side. And even when I watched the video on um, him talking about uh, the, the decision that got one, well, it didn't get overturned, but the decision for the discrimination, uh, what is it? The affirmative action. Uh, I thought that he, where he was going to go was it was the white people's fault. And I, you have to go watch that video. But pretty much what he ends up saying is, you know, he's he's saying he's not against it. But at the same time, he, he was making it seem like it was sounding like white people were saying, exactly. You see, this is what we've been trying to tell y'all. But his his point was. Yeah, the reason affirmative action happened in the first place, though, is because of racism. Now, did it get out of hand? Did it go a little far? Yeah, but it, don't act like it being in place at all was not, there was no reason behind it. And I would agree with that. There was a reason behind it. It went too far, but let's not act like there wasn't racism to begin with, because there was. Now, I'm not making it people, people the white devil. All I'm saying is don't ignore the history. There is facts of why it was started in the first place. Did it go south? Of course it did. Kind of screwed everybody over, especially blacks. But at the same time, you know, that was also everybody getting mixed in in the manipulation. Okay, back to back to Stephen A. So that's something I've been having to learn. Is I need to listen to people that I would normally not agree with. Because I think most people who have good sense, we can normally agree on most things. It's only the people who are extreme right or extreme left that it's hard to listen to them. And I'm having to learn to not always just assume that my side is right or assume that I um, have the most knowledge or the most logic. I think that is a flaw that I've been having and I, ref I was not trying to listen to Stephen A, but today I really sat down in the last week. I really sat down and start listening to his podcast. I even watched a few interviews with him back in the day when he talked to like Will Kane and he was going on his book tour. I started listening to him and I just wanted to say that I've been bad about that and I've gotten better. Um, so that's why um, I was willing to listen, hear him out this time. And so anyway, back to it. <laughs> Wrong video. Inconsistent. And when it's inconsistent, white folks and other folks in this country look at us with a raised eyebrow because the level of consistency is not there. And it gives them cause to challenge the authenticity of our argument because we're not making an argument about black lives mattering. We're only saying that when a black life is taken from somebody who's not black. But we ain't saying it when it's taken from those who are. And when you do that, you dilute the potency of our position. Completely agree. That is... 
That is what I say when you get the extreme right or the extreme left. What you end up getting is saying that, why don't we deal with the black on black crime first? And then the black voices are silenced. They don't talk about it, and that it kills any arguments. Because you know how I don't like to go against black people. I don't, you know. But at the same time, I feel like I have to talk about the other side because I can't. Because it, it, it's foolish to say that white pe black people are getting killed by white guys in, ma in mass when it's just truly not true. Black people are way more likely to die at the hands of black people. Why can't we deal with that? And I talked last week. I said, if what if we just assume there is no white supremacy? Let's assume that that doesn't exist. What are we going to do about the black people killing black people? Now, let me get to the statistics I was going to talk about earlier. Okay. Oop. I mixed up my buttons today. So I'm used to pressing it in different areas. So I was going to talk about, like I said, you can go to police one, uh, dot com to find these, um, things or you can go to wallet hub whichever one you want to <clears throat> okay so the the report ranks the following cities in the top five homicides per capita in 2003 that's memphis tennessee new orleans louisiana baltimore maryland st louis missouri and detroit michigan okay now what are the black population percentages in those cities okay we got memphis tennessee 64.6 percent black new orleans that is at 58.1% black. Baltimore, 61.6% black. St. Louis is only at 44.8% black. And Detroit is at 77.9% black. You can get all this information by going to the U.S. Consensus Bureau. Uh, they always have those statistics. So, the top five cities in homicides have a huge population outside of St. Louis, right? But the majority of the crimes are committed by the black population. Now, I went ahead and did a little bit more digging. I went to go see which cities have the lowest homicide rates per capita. You got, I believe it's Rayleigh, North Carolina. They're at 28% black. You got Omaha, Nebraska, which is at 11.8% 11, .8 black. You got Madison, Wisconsin, which is at 13%. Uh, no, at 6.8% black. You got Sacramento, California at 13.4% black. An astonishing I didn't even know this until I was looking into it. Scottsdale, Arizona has one of the lowest homicide rates. Would you guess what the percentage of black people live in Scottsdale, Arizona? Take your number. I'm going to give you five seconds. Two percent. Only two. The population of Scottsdale, Arizona is two percent. 80% white and then other races are mixed in there. I, you know what's so crazy? Before I even talk about that. At one point in my life, I was going to move to Scottsdale, Arizona because of the crime rate was so low, but I did not realize the black population was that low. I just saw that. It's kind of expensive to live there. Good, good guess, Poppy. It's a 2%. Uh, but, you know, I thought about living there. It's expensive to live in Scottsdale. But I, I was pretty close to moving to Scottsdale, Arizona at one point in my life, not realizing that the black population was 2%. I would have been alone. In fact, to be honest with you guys, where I live now, the black population is specifically where I live. The black population where I live is like maybe 2 to 3% here. But I live in a very small town, so it's a little different. Overall, my area percentage wise i think it's 13 percent, 13 percent black something like that but where i live it's like two and uh we're a pretty safe town we do got crimes crimes are committed because people are people but murder robbery all that is way low the only drug the things we have here more is drug related right um but anyway i just want to throw that out there uh, i'm gonna let Stephen a finish his point and then we'll uh I'll continue on with my point. We'll get back. We'll get moving on. Yeah, Scottsdale has a lot of money. I could not afford to live there. <laughs> not yet, at least. And the argument falls on deaf ears. And then everything that we want accomplished is like whistling in the wind. It's why racism has fallen to the bottom of the totem pole in favor of xenophobia, homophobia, transphobia. It's why affirmative action gets eradicated without a blink of an eye. It's how all the things that particularly affect our communities becomes a diluted issue. It's why diversity, equity, and inclusion is next. 
because we don't matter as much as we should. Part of the reason is history and systemic racism that comes with it. The other part is the fact that we have some bad apples in our community who don't give two shits about us and would take us out without blinking. When are we going to deal with that? <sighs> yeah. Now, statistics, systematic racism, I do believe did exist at a point. But today, I have more of a, um, I don't see it as much, as much as I would like to say. I, I, I can't say that, oh, man, it's so obvious, man. There's just so much racism. Do I think people are racist? Yes. And I think people, I think when there is racism now, I don't think it's what we used to see. I don't think it's like a certain race being like, man, I hate black people. I, I can't stand them. I wish they'd all die. I think now people look at us like, man, they're just, the black people are just animals, idiots, stupid. Like, it's like the racism I see is more like, man, black people, we got to hold their hand through everything. We got to build certain, uh, we got to put certain laws in place. We got to do what we can to get them to get jobs. We got to make sure that there's diversity. It's like, we, it's like, we can't do a whole lot of stuff on our own merit, right? In the back of your head, if you're a black person watching, you got to think to yourself, like, anytime you get a job or promotion, it's in the back of your head. You know it's in the back of your head. Then I only get it because I'm black. It's like, and that's a hard place to come out of because maybe you did. Maybe some people are like, you know what, let's give this black guy a chance, you know? Or some people are just like, ah, well, we don't have enough black people. It always feels like when you do succeed, it's like, man, is it because of, of my color? I don't even know anymore. Anyway. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this black on black crime. Let me know what y'all think about Stephen A. Um, do you think that the reason people don't really fight for, um, do you think the reason that black people don't succeed in this country really is because of how we hunt down our own? Do you think it's because there's laws in place that make us always where we have to have our hand held to do everything? Black people can't do anything on their own. And honestly, what do you think? Do you think black people as a community, a full community, have just started to fall, like started to falter? Um, I want to hear your things. Let me know. We're going to move on to the next topic. Y'all have a good day. Peace.